Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today on the channel, we're gonna be talking about organizing your survival or emergency gear in your vehicle. You know, in an emergency, you're gonna be under a lot of duress. And if it's not second nature, uh, accessing your gear, having it organized, then it's gonna be very difficult for you to get what you need when you need it most. So organizing your gear in your vehicle, like I'm gonna talk about today, is not only important for everyday use and just good etiquette, but it's also great for when you need that gear most. Knowing where your gear is in times of crisis is as important as the gear itself. So let's talk about it. Okay, so the basis of today's discussion is this project I've been working on where I'm using these uh, Molly panels. These are steel panels and you bolt them into your vehicle. You can get these for a variety of different vehicles, whether it's an SUV or a car, you can mount them. This particular one, I have it mounted to both sides of the truck bed. So I'm gonna break down my strategy for how I organized this and why I laid it out the way I did today. So let's get to it. Okay, so we're currently in the truck bed of my 2019 Toyota Tundra. As you can see, I do have a canopy over the box here. This is called a box topper, um, a box cover. There's different names for it. And I recently replaced my Diamondback tonneau cover just so I could have more space. And I'm going to be able to fully customize this in the future. I'm in the process of working on that. And we'll talk about that in future videos. But the subject matter for today is this awesome molly panel that i just installed took a little bit of tinkering there was a little bit of installation this one is no drill depending on the vehicle that you have you may have to drill into your vehicle but i tell you once you get it on there it's really well worth it i don't like the cloth webbing systems that i've seen uh they're just uh, they're not rigid enough they're not sturdy enough this is a nice sturdy design there's a little bit of play in the middle but it's bolted in there into the sides, it ain't moving. And I would say it can comfortably hold at least 100 pounds of gear without uh, putting too much stress on the uh, mounting points. It's just really great because I can use this space, which often doesn't get used because I'm gonna be putting a bed slide in here. So when I do get the bed slide in here, it's basically going to nullify all this space. So I wanted to make sure I could still use this space and this is the perfect use for it. All this stuff stays in here hard and fast. And what I'm using is some quick fist grips. You can attach, you know, things in a variety of ways. You can use carabiners. You can use the clips on your actual tools. You can just use standard Molly straps from your Molly webbing. Now, oftentimes I've seen two approaches to uh, people who set up systems like this. Either they have way too much stuff or they don't have enough stuff at all like i see some guys who go through all that the trouble of installing one of these systems and they just have a shovel hanging on it well to me that's a lot of work just for a shovel if i'm gonna put something like this into my vehicle i'm gonna want it to be you know used for a lot more than just a, a shovel that i maybe won't ever use now if you're overlanding if you're gonna use your shovel once there's a good chance that you're using it a lot that day but it's not something that I plan on using every day. But the shovel I did choose was this uh, narrow mouth. It's not very wide, but it's got a scoop to it and it's deep. I think this shovel is perfect for trying to shovel your way around a tire because of that narrow profile. I don't know too much about shovels and overlanding. I know there's some special, you know, really high price shovels that the overlanders use. I think some people just have it as a status symbol to have their $200 shovel mounted on the side of their vehicle that they're never going to use. But this is great. It's cheap and it's uh, tempered steel. So I know it's not going to break on me like some shovels have. Up next, I have the Silky Katana Boy 650 saw. Now, this is a great tool to have, especially if you're going through the back country, if you need to clear trails. This is the best saw in its class. There really is no other uh, competition on the market. It's basically a manual chainsaw. You don't want to rely on chainsaws because they're loud. They uh, can break. They got a lot of moving parts. And of course, they require gasoline. So that's why I always go with the Silky Katana Boy. Nice narrow profile again, fits perfectly 
on this racking system. Over here, we got our Halta Fours Wetterhall axe. It's a double-sided axe. It's an absolute beast of an axe. I love this axe, man. It works great as a chopper, but it also works good as a splitter because it just has so much weight on it and it just looks really freaking cool. So if I had one axe for the apocalypse, it's definitely uh, the Halta 4's Wetter 4. Now I do have a couple Baofeng radios here in case we got to do some reconnaissance or you know the party's got to get split up or something. I do have my Survival Lily Apple 1 knife. Now that is mounted to here via molly panels it's not my only knife i have obviously this is not the only gear i have in the truck i should say that right away because i know i'm going to get a lot of comments so where is this where is that well that some people put too much stuff on it and it kind of defeats the purpose because then you're just looking for stuff on your panel okay so i tried to give things some breathing room here as you can see give it the space that it needs so it stands out so it's easy to deploy in an instant. So I do have other knives in the truck. There's a lot more gear in the truck, a lot more storage. We're gonna do a whole uh, one hour video of the truck once it's all done. But I like that knife because it's basically a dual knife. I also have the Stanley Fat Max uh, wrecking tool slash hammer pry bar. Just having uh, an item like that in a camp situation, in an emergency situation. Look, if I got in an accident, I had to pry somebody out of their vehicle, or you know, if somebody was hung up on something, or you know, something like this can definitely come in handy. So that's why we got the Stanley Fat Max there. I also have a much larger version of that in another part of the vehicle, but more on that later. So we also have a fire extinguisher and a first aid kit close to the end. It's very important that those are going to be as accessible as possible. All the stuff which I'm not going to need immediately can go over here, but the emergency related stuff goes over here. And that kind of works out good because you get more space closer to the tailgate of the vehicle to play with. And then I have two flashlights mounted here. I have a floodlight over there and you can't see it here. It's behind this shovel, but I also have a spotlight, a thrower. So this can throw, I believe, over a kilometer. So if I need to see further off in the distance, I would use that light. And then I also have some bear spray just mounted on the end there. So you can design this and customize this however you want it. But I would advise if you are going to do something like this, don't go too overboard and feel that you need to fill up every possible nook and cranny of the space because then it's just going to be harder to access stuff in a pinch. I think this is a good go between, between just having a shovel or a water jug mounted on it and uh, having it, it just turning into a big cluster, you know what. So I do have uh, the same system on the opposite end of the truck bed, which I'm not, haven't decided what I'm gonna do with that side just yet because there are gonna be more modifications made to this truck topper. So there's bins that actually come out that are going to provide more organization. So there's gonna to be tons of organization, tons of volume. I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna use this space yet, but you can also get these for the back panel as well. So that's something I might consider at some point, but that because I'm gonna have the bed slide in here, this will still be usable space. I'm trying to maximize the use of the space in here to the best of my ability. So if you have any suggestions on, you know, ways that I can modify this to uh, make it better, to make it more efficient, then let me know in the comment section below. Uh, the only downside is that if I want to access this stuff, I do have to enter the truck bed to get it. I can access some of it through this window that opens up here. And most of this stuff I can access from the tailgate. But I can still reach around and grab this stuff here if I need to. So. Overall, I, I really like the system. It's very sturdy. There's no clinking around. You know, if, if I roll the vehicle or something, most of this stuff is going to stay put. So in terms of the actual model of panels that I'm using here, I have no affiliation with the company. I did purchase this with my own money. So this wasn't sent to me for review or anything like that. Uh, at some point, you know, they may throw me an affiliate link and I'll throw it in the description below. But if you want more information on this particular model, check out the uh, description below and you can get that info. 
And I would just encourage you to shop around because there's a lot of these types of systems on the market, but I would strongly advise against the cloth webbing style. They're just uh, a pain and you know, some of them have some cool Velcro features. This is magnetic. That's another way you can stick items to it. Of course, they'll have to be pretty strong magnets if you're going down the back roads and bumping around a lot, but I'm sure you can get some good neodymium magnets to um, hold stuff to there. I don't think that this is the end all and be all of Molly panel uh, vehicle insert designs. I think that they could probably do it better with magnets and interlocking latches or, or something like that. I think that this whole concept is still going to see a lot of evolution in the future. So, you know, if you're a person who's entrepreneurial and uh, you like making stuff like this, then maybe you can design a system which is even going to be uh, superior to this. The biggest drawback with this is that you do have to undo the rubber. It's fairly user friendly, but it's not push button user friendly. So I still think that the system could be improved and maybe even purpose built for the purpose of uh, emergency preparedness, meaning that you would have preset places for every particular thing. So I've attached my winter bug out roll kit to the side molly panel here and how this works then is we we'll just go like that. Okay, so this rolls out just like that. Then you have access to all your gear there. So it's just a way to store more stuff and keep it organized. Remember, it's all about organization, knowing where everything is. Uh, with the bug out roll, everything is visual. This is a really hard vinyl, cold crack resistant. It is uh, high temperature resistant, UV resistant. So it's just really solid stuff. Once you're done, you would just roll it up, mount it back on the wall there. All right, guys, thanks a lot for tuning in today. The best way to support this channel is to subscribe and share the videos, leave a comment. Anything like that really helps it out. And if you have any suggestions on how I can improve this system, uh, specifically around the area of these latches, if you have any ideas for a better latching system, maybe even a magnetic latching system to make this a bit more user-friendly, a bit more plug and play, because I do think that the, the one downside of this, the only downside I see is the time it takes to get a tool off. It does take a little bit of time and that's a place where I think the product could still use improvement. Let me know in the comment section below. Stay safe, don't forget the strong survive, the prepared thrive. Thanks for watching, Canadian Prep Pro. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com. The best quality products at the best prices. Use discount code SURVIVALPREPPER, all caps, all one word, for 10% off. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.